morning, you two are. Good morning, Estelle. Good morning, Joshua. Morning, Ina. Good morning. Is Shara here already? Yes, she's waiting for you upstairs. Once you finish today's training, you'll finally be recognized as members of the Fraser Guild. Unless we fail the test. Good luck to the both of you. Thanks! We'll do our best. Even if our best is not good enough. Once you finish, blah blah blah. Are these wanted posters? Oops. My bad. Can we get the hunt down criminal? The star and the hanged man. The hermit and the magician. And last of all, inversion through the wheel of fortune. Hmm, this is a difficult combination. How should I interpret this? Good morning, Shara. Well, if it isn't Estelle and Joshua, this is a rare occasion for the both of you to show up so early. Since it's my last day of training, I figured, why not? I'm ready to get the show on the road and become a bracer myself. I'll give you credit for your enthusiasm, but I'm going to work you hard today in every way I can think of to make sure that high-spirited attitude of yours holds up. I hope you're ready. I can feel that enthusiasm dropping already. Quiet, you. Every time I teach you something, you somehow manage to forget it. This training is my way of trying to keep some of that information in your head instead of letting it dribble out your ears like it usually does. Wow, Joshua, Shara's picking on me. Don't worry, Shara. While Estelle may hate studying and rarely ever does her homework, acts rashly, is overly naive, and has a tendency to stick her nose into everything. Her instincts are sharp, so I'm sure she'll pick up on how to use an ornament with some practice. Eventually. Probably. Wow, Joshua's vote of confidence right there. Really, really inspiring. I guess there's not much I can do now except hope for the best. Hold on a sec, Joshua. Somehow I get the feeling that you weren't standing up for me. Well, that's odd. I'm positive I described all your best traits accurately. Whatever. By the way, Shara, what were you trying to predict with your tarot cards? Tarot cards? Tarot cards? I don't know. Your face was really intent. Oh, this? I was just trying to get a vague reading about what might happen in the near future. Unfortunately, I don't seem to have been in the right mindset to interpret the cards correctly. You couldn't read the cards? Now that's surprising to hear. Actually, the more profound the meaning of the cards, the more difficult they become to interpret. But that's not important now. I think it's time we start your final training. I'll give you a brief rundown of all the information we've covered in your previous training. This is the minimal level of knowledge that Bracer should have in order to function effectively. And, Estelle, make sure you pay especially close attention to what I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah. What would you like to know about? Uh, please don't let it be a written test. <laughs> Orbments are mechanical devices which operate by using what is known as orbital energy. A variety of effects can be produced depending on their structure and the type of quartz or process septium installed. Please don't let it be a written test. Although it's only been about 50 years since their invention, these devices play an integral part in all facets of life from lights, heaters, and other everyday products to weapons, magic, and even airships. Okay, well the weapons and magic, you know, I'm pretty sure we're gonna get to use later. But... Do we get to fly an airship as well? Because that would be totally cool and I would be totally down for that. I mean, you know, just, you know, just like for a quest or something. Like, an airship goes down, we're on the, the airship and, you know, there's nobody there, there's nobody there to fly it. Something happens to the pilot. In connection, this technological reform is commonly known as the Orville Revolution. Oh, that's it? That wasn't too bad. Bracers. Bracers are investigative and combat specialists who work to protect civilians and maintain the stability of their respective regions. They aid the community in various ways, such as exterminating monsters, preventing crime, 
finding lost items, and escorting people and goods. The Bracer Guild, which has established branches across the continent, manages the affairs of the Bracers in each region. Ooh, is that money? The Kingdom of Liberal, in which we live, sits on the western half of the Zemurian continent and abounds with nature and deep-rooted conditions. Or traditions, my bad. Liberal is proud to be one of the leading producers of Septium on the continent and is known for its high level of technology used to develop Orbman. Orbman technology has also been a key pillar of support for Liberal in protecting its independence as it has contended with neighboring nations. Ten years ago, when Liberal was invaded by the Erebonian Empire, it was the use of orbital-powered airships that saved the kingdom from defeat. Consequently, even now our relationship with the Empire is somewhat sensitive, but thanks to the Queen's political finesse, Liberal enjoys peace. Ooh, that wasn't too bad. Let's see, since we've got a mountain of stuff to do today, I'll let you off the hook this time with a condensed review. I'm going to speed things up now and move on to the practical portion of your training. Uh, Shara? How is today's practical training any different from the training we've done before? Since it's practical, that means you will be experiencing things firsthand. Therefore, I'm going to have the both of you run through everything as if this, as if this were a real bracer job. So what you're saying is, there won't be any studying at a desk involved? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. This time you'll have to go out and make a physical effort to accomplish your task. I'll make sure to have you work up a sweat, so I hope you're ready. Yes! That's seriously just what the doctor ordered. I didn't know what I was going to do if I had to sit another day with my tush parked at a desk. I guess I got all worried for nothing. Well, you can still fail. Well, suddenly you're all bright and cheery and cheerful as though. Let's just hope that smile on your face lasts until the end of today's training. Okay, let's get cracking on your first objective, shall we? Let's have at it. Your first objective will be to confirm the details of the job you will be performing. But before that, there's something that we need to give the both of you. Aina, are they ready? Yes, they are. Alright, you two. Go get one for each of yourselves. Quit wasting time and go get them. Rude. Just wanted to confirm some things with you, Shara. Just wanted to talk to you some more, get to know you better. These are very important, so make sure not to lose them. Bracer Notebook. Bracer notebooks serve as the official way to record the status of your current jobs. Also, anything you may hear or anything that you may find and where, these kinds of trivial things can often become clues. No matter how insignificant something may seem, always write it down. Understood. Crap, this sounds like it's going to be a pain. I feel you, Estelle. I feel you. Oh? Please tell me it was my ears playing tricks on me, because I swear I only got one response. Um, I'm sure there were two. Keeping an accurate account of events is an important duty for all bracers. So, get with the program and stop trying to make this out to be more than it really is, Estelle. Okay, okay, I got it. Make sure you do. Alright then, let's begin. Look over by the door. You can see that there's a bulletin board standing there. First, I want you to go and check the job description posted there. When the bulletin board is approached, a uh, exclamation mark will appear. Pressing the OK button will display the job list. By selecting the job names on the list, you can view their details. Quit screwing around and check the job description. OK, OK, jeez. The bulletin board is over there. Over here? Or here? Searching the sewers beneath Relent, bringing back the contents of a chest. See Sherazard for details. Details of the job confirmed on the bulletin board and other important events will be automatically recorded in the Bracer Notebook. Bracer Notebook can be easily found by clicking on the Books tab of the Items menu. It can also be accessed by configuring a Bracer Book shortcut button on the Configuration menu. Very good. Looks like you were able to see what was posted without any trouble. Checking the bulletin board is one of the most basic functions a Bracer performs on their job. Checking regularly to see whether or not there are any urgent tasks which need immediate attention is also an important duty for bracers. Man, all this talk about duty has started to cramp my style. 
Sure, there are a lot of rules to follow, but there is an equal level of responsibility in the jobs themselves. I think being a bracer calls for much more than just someone with a half-hearted attitude. Um, I guess you're right. I'll just have to be more motivated. Is that so? Had a change of heart, have you? You betcha. Well, before all that motivation sneaks off somewhere, let's get to work on your next task. What will we be doing this time? We'll be heading across the street to Mr. Melder's Orville factory and learning about how to use its services. He has graciously taken time of, out of his work schedule to explain things, so make sure to be on your best behavior. Okay. Here is where you will learn how to use an Orbital Factory services. At an Orbital Factory, you can modify your ornaments and synthesize support cords in order to use Orbital Arts. Arts have a wide range of effects and if mastered can be extremely helpful. The bracer business is a pretty risky occupation, so the guild has had a long-standing relationship with these Orbital Factories. Anyway, this is about as much as I can explain. I'll leave the technical details to the expert. So Mr. Melders, if you wouldn't mind taking over from here? No problem, leave everything to me. So what is it that you would like to know about? Ordnance are mechanical devices which exhibit an array of effects through the installation of various types of quartz. By definition, that means that lights, airship engines, and so on are also types of ordnance. However, the ones we will be discussing today are battle ordnance, which enhance the user's physical abilities and make it possible to use magic. All of us magic. Since each ornament is adjusted to match the owner's personal aptitude, the structures for these devices also differ for each owner. Simply put, the shape of the fixed elemental slots and lines which connect them vary. At any rate, that's the layman's explanation. That was the easy wor version? In order to install quartz, you must first have an open slot. By default, the central slot is open, but the other slots must be open at an orbital factory like this. It'll take a fair amount of seven, too. EP, which is needed for magic, will also see a max increase according to the number of open slots. I recommend opening them all as soon as possible. So, what is it that you would like to know about? Simply put, orbital arts are magic which can be discar discharged exclusively through the use of battle ornaments. In other words, a number of peculiar effects can be produced by using the orbital energy stored within these mechanical devices. Since orbital arts can be a mouthful, they almost universally they are almost universally referred to as arts. Probably ought to have been called that from the get-go. There are several types of arts, but in order to be able to use them, their corresponding quartz must first be synthesized, synthesized at an orbital factory. Ornaments are also set up so that once a particular quartz is installed into a slot, the owner will be able to use those arts. The type of arts one can use also changes depending on the elemental value and the combination of installed quartz. Basically, if you want to use water arts, all you have to do is install quartz with a water elemental value. In reality, ornaments are much more complex than what I have described, but I think this information should suffice for now. So what is it? Uh, blah, blah. Quartz are circuits made from sepith. Quartz have a vast number of effects and raise the owner's abilities while simultaneously making it possible for them to use arts. However, you will not be able to harness any of these effects until quartz has been installed into a slot. However, there are also fixed slots in which only a certain type of elemental quartz can be installed. This being the case, when you synthesize a new quartz, be sure to check your ornament and decide where you will be installing it ahead of time. I'm not good at that. Thinking ahead? Not good at that at all. So what is it that you would like to know about? Uh... Sepith are fragments of septium which are dropped by monsters. They are divided into seven types, earth, water, fire, wind, time, space, and mirage. Sepith can be exchanged for Mira almost anywhere, but at the Orbital Factory, it can be used to synthesize quartz and to open Orman slots in which to install the synthesized quartz. So what is it that you well, I think we're done. Looks like Mr. Melders has answered all your questions. If there's nothing else, then let's have you both try and use the services here. For that, you're going to need some, some seppets. Woohoo! With that amount, you two should be able to synthesize a few quartz. Now I want you to begin by first making an elemental quartz that will work with each of your particular ornaments. In your case, Estelle, any elemental quartz is okay, but for you, Joshua, it has to be a time elemental quartz. Normally at a shop, you would be able to exchange seppets for Mira, but for this training, you will not be able to use this service. 
fine, blah, blah. Share it. Now I want you to begin by first making an elemental quartz that will work with each of your particular ornaments. Okay. Okay. Oh, good work so far. If you need to use the horrible factory, give Freddy a holler over there. Hi there, it looks like you two are doing well in your training. If you would like to modify your ornaments, please select the modify trade service. What if I just want to talk to you, dude? Joshua has to get this one. And now I don't have any for another. I was gonna give Estelle this one too. Cause speed is nice, I guess. Um hmm. What to get Estelle? I guess healing. Healing is good, right? Looks like you are able to synthesize one. Next, I want you to increase the arts you can use. Now install a quartz into your ornament so that you use you can use both recovery and attack arts. Uh and Joshua. What arts do you get for that? Does it tell you? It doesn't tell you the arts you get. Oh, oh, yeah, it does. It's at the bottom. I just didn't see it because it was faded out. Um, clock up and so blur. Wait. Clock up. Uh, speeds up the flow of time. Speed plus 25%. Nice. Time space shaking pulse. Faint 20%. Interesting. And for this, heals 200 HP for an ally. And heavy stream of water. Cool, cool. Alright, looks like you've got both recovery and attack arts set up. If you balance your arts out between each other, like you've done here, it should make dealing with monsters much easier. Additionally, your bracer notebooks contain information about which quartz allow you to use which arts. If you'd like to use more powerful arts, check out the arts and quartz chart in your bracer notebooks and find something that works for you. Alright, our training here is almost finished. Last of all, I'm going to have one of you open a new slot in your ornaments. Only one of us? Well, that's not fair. The more slots you have available to you, the broader range of choices you'll have. Since EP, which is consumed by using arts, can have its max value increased by opening up slots, be a good idea to open them all early on. Now I want you to use the Sephith and open a slot on each of your ornaments. Go ahead and decide which slots you're going to open. Uh, okay. Do I know how much EP each person has right now? Like, where are their stats? Estelle has 50 EP, Joshua has 50 EP, Estelle has less health than Joshua. What's Estelle's speed is 10, Joshua's speed is 13. Huh. Interesting. Oh, Joshua has twin swords! Ooh, that's neat. And Estelle has her stick. Um, 
spell has healing already. We need to open a slot. I think. Yeah. For Joshua, maybe? Oh. That's not good. See, what I was going- I was hoping to do was, like, uh, open up this one for Joshua, I guess? Uh, because all courts are okay, it doesn't just have to be a time court. And then put healing on him as well. Make another, um, water gem and put healing on him as well. Then they can, like, heal each other or whatever, then I have double the healing. Um, because I don't like it when my characters die, but I don't have enough. If I open it, like, I won't have enough to do anything else. So that sucks. Um, what are the options for Estelle? open Joshua's slot first because then later when I get enough blue orb thingies then I can get I can just give it to him and yeah let's let's go with that and then he'll have healing too Good work on opening up a slot, Joshua. Since your central slot is limited to a certain elemental, it would be best to increase your orphan's number of open slots early on. Yay, I made the right choice. This concludes your training here at the Orbal Factory. Now it's time to move on to what you've both been waiting for, the qualification test. Pardon? Oh no, Estelle, she lied. She lied. She said there wasn't going to be a test. Did you just say test? You can't honestly tell me that you forgot about the test. Again, can you? I love his expressions. Didn't I remind you just this morning? <laughs> now that you mention it, I vaguely remember some sort of talk along those lines at the breakfast table. Sometimes I fear for the future of the Brazer Guild. And humanity. Oh well, no sense in worrying about that now. Let's head over to the testing area. You mean, like, now? I don't know if I'm ready for... How about a little less yapping and a little more walking? Oh, and she gets dragged off by Shara. Joshua, help me! Mr. Melders, Freddy, thank you for all your help. <laughs> Joshua. Don't mention it, and good luck with that test of yours. We'll be rooting for you. I'm going to remember that you left me high and dry like this, Joshua. All your training has finally come down to this. Your qualification test will begin here. I expect to see you both use what you've learned up to this point. Understood. <gasps> What's wrong, Estelle? Uh, Shara? What now? I was kind of wondering, but is there not going to be a paper test or something? Did Cassius drop you on your head as a child or something? You just read what it said on the bulletin board not that long ago, right? Yeah, and? And I even made you jot down what you read in your Bracer notebooks, unless you forgot that too. I'm pretty sure the job listing mentions searching for and retrieving an item from the sewers. Ringing any bells yet? What a relief! <laughs> oh, divine Adios. I give thanks to thee for thy infinite grace in bestowing upon us such wonderful gifts as sewers. 
So what you're really saying is that you thought it was a paper test. No wonder you were acting all crazy back at the Orbal factory. Ah, I can already feel the nostalgia. All those horrible days stuck in a classroom are starting to feel like grand memories indeed. I'm really starting to wonder if we'll even be able to graduate at all. What's wrong with you? Why do you have to go and say something like that when I'm trying to reminisce about positive things? Alright, that's enough jabbering, you two. This is supposed to be a test, so how about the both of you try to at least look a little anxious? Just so you know, though, if you do happen to flunk the test, you don't even want to imagine the kind of homework I have in store for the both of you. Haha, <laughs> we'll be fine. Just tell us what you want us to do and let us loose. Well, if you're so confident, then how about proving that you're not just blowing hot air with the results of your test? Anyway, as you both saw on the bulletin board, this test will have will be a search conducted in Roland's sewers. Your objective is to retrieve the contents of a chest which has been placed somewhere within that area. The layout of the sewers is extremely simple, so you don't need to worry about getting lost either. However, there are real, living, breathing monsters down there, so if you get careless and let your guard down, you will be sorry. Also, let me give you this before I forget. Tear Bombs, Monster Guide. What's this book for? It's called a Monster Guide, and it's used to record information about monsters and other opponents you meet. Whenever you figure out an enemy's attributes, you should make an immediate note of it in there. Yeah, you, you take care of the monsters. You you hold down the fort there, Joshua, while I write down while I write down these notes. Sounds pretty straightforward to me. He who controls the flow of information controls the tide of battle, right? That's exactly what I'm saying. You've really got a good head on your shoulders, Joshua. That's some pretty useful advice. Thanks for the tip, Shara. We'll put it to good use. Alrighty then. Let's get pumped and knock out this test. Let's. Don't forget though, this is an exam. We should make sure we treat it as such. Wait a minute, Estelle. You still haven't retrieved the object we're looking for. There appears to be a recovery point set up over there. Let's use it if our HP and EP become low before engaging in any further battles. Ordnance charging stations are recovery points set up in dangerous areas. As a recovery point is approached, an exclamation mark will appear and two choices will be displayed by pressing the OK button. By selecting the rest option, all HP and EP will be restored. Sounds like a plan to me. That's pretty. It's a monster. Can we scoot around this thing? That's a no. That is a no. Monsters at 12 o'clock. Be careful not to let them take advantage of your blind side. Got it! Monsters cannot be seen from far away. They will become visible as you approach them. The conditions at the start of a battle will change depending on how a monster is engaged. Engaging an enemy from behind is advantageous, while being attacked by an enemy from behind, while being attacked by an enemy from behind is disadvantageous. Attack. Attack an enemy. You may also use it to move if you are using a mouse and click an empty location. The highlighted area indicates the distance the character can move. Selecting a target in this area will move the character to attack. When an er enemy is out of range, a thingy icon will appear on your cursor. Selecting an out of range target will move the character as close to it as possible, but no attack will be performed. Let's see what you can do, Acel. Your turn, Joshua. Woohoo! Oh, Joshua gets to go again. Yes, two swords. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just push him into the water? 
and they drown. the enemy some physical some physical attacks may be ineffective let's use arts not physical attacks okay arts are effective on enemies that are good at avoiding physical attacks arts also make long-range attacks possible but they require time to be cast EP is consumed when arts are used EP can be recovered by resting at inns hotels or by using charge stations and other items like an EP charge Arts. Arts are effective against foes which are difficult to hit with a weapon or those on which physical attacks have little effect. It takes time before arts can be cast. Also, EP is consumed when arts are cast. All arts have an element. Determine the element most effective against your foe and use it. Okay. Uh, healing and water attack. I mean... According to this, it's all the same, so. Clock up. B. And a time shaking pulse. Time space shaking pulse. That sounds neat. Um, I don't know how much damage this is gonna do. Let's just put it on the same guy. When it's dead. Yay! I like how Estelle casts herself first, but uh, Joshua is the one who, like, right. executes first. <laughs> uh. Okay, I really need black ones, please. Well, let's try using crafts this time around. Since crafts have other effects besides just dealing out damage, they're worth a shot. Roger that! Crafts have range limits, but can be utilized instantly. CP is gained by dealing out or receiving damage during battle. Crafts. Crafts are character-specific skills which not only deal out damage, but also have a broad range of effects. Using crafts consumes CP. CP is gradually gained by dealing out or receiving damage in battle. Cool. Cool. Uh, morale. A shout to encourage allies. Come on. Yeah, Joshua, come on. And Joshua. Dual strike unleashes a double slash with dual blade. And Joshua gets attacked from behind. I mean, does that only really matter if, like, you're starting the battle? And it's dead! Alright, we're good to go. Reviving Ball. The chest is empty, because of you. Nice work, hero. Why, thank you. I appreciate it. The door is rusted and appears to be locked. I mean... He'll kick it down? Oh, what a surprise. Another creepy thing. I wish there were an easier way to take care of them. One blow using an F-Craft or S-Break should do the trick for just about any enemy. The catch is our CP has to be at least 100 to pull off one of those moves. These 
devastating attacks can only be unleashed when the CP gauge is above 100. S breaks are actions which allow S crafts to be immediately unleashed while ignoring the battle order. S crafts which are unleashed as S breaks can be changed by going to tactics and then set S break within the main menu. Actions which allow S crafts to be immediately unleashed while ignoring the battle order once the CP gauge has reached zero. S crafts, which will be used as S breaks, can be changed by going to tactics and blah blah blah. Okay. Press the red break button to unleash an S break. An S break cannot be unleashed under the whatever condition. Now, press the red break button and try unleashing an S break. If you're using a keyboard, you may use the one to th okay. Uh... You know, with such a super awesome attack, you would expect it to be an AoE. Um... Okay, this guy has 20 out of 80, so he's going to die anyway. Let's hit one of the full health ones? Good job, Estelle. And Joshua, why don't you just kill this guy off? Thank you! Joshua is getting destroyed. <laughs> I'm sorry, Joshua. Please don't die. <laughs> Good job, guys. Anything over here? New? So that's the treasure chest we're after, huh? If we've made it this far, the rest is gonna be a piece of cake. Seems like we've got a little breathing room at least. Let's pay close attention to our battle order this time. There should be a number of ways to get more mileage out of our actions. During battle, there are several bonuses which can be allotted to turn. Turn bonuses have the same effect regardless of whether they are allotted to an ally or a foe. Using S breaks to ignore the battle order makes it easy to jump in and strip an enemy of their turn bonus. Uh... These icons indicate the bonuses allotted to the battle order. If a bonus icon appears next to a character's icon, they will receive that bonus. Heal HP, step is up, etc. indicate the effects of each icon. So it looks like Estelle gets a heal, but um, Joshua is the one who actually needs it, because if not, he about to die. This is the tutorial, like, section. I, I really don't want to die during the tutorial section. Uh... Okay. Well... Um... Hmm... Can't reach that guy. Okay. I'll just kill these guys off. Joshua, why don't you use art? No. No, we don't want that. Let's just kill off as many of them as we can to start. That way there are fewer people attacking us. Attacking Joshua. I really don't want you to die, Joshua! Oh, thank you! Thank you for hitting Estelle! <laughs> uh, whose turn is it? It's Joshua's turn again. Okay. Um, oh, this isn't good. This is not good at all. Um... Okay. Okay, glad it was the one in the back. Estelle! I need you to heal Joshua! Please! Oh! 
That's not good. And Jajun's gonna die. Oh no. Not now. Jajun died! Oh no! That sucks! Ah! I can't believe he died. Estelle, you're on your own, kid. Ah. I forgot they were magic only. You know what, whatever. I'm, I'm just gonna let Estelle die as well, because... Like, otherwise it's just gonna mess up my, like, leveling. Like, Estelle's gonna have more experience than Joshua. So we're just gonna let her die! It's fine, it's fine. Okay, that hit. Um, I'm still just, I'm still gonna let her die because I don't care. Ugh. Oh no! It, this thing doesn't attack you. That's not good. I need a spell to die. <laughs> okay. Oh, Joshua's? I mean, he's still- he's still gonna be dead in the party. Can I heal him from here, is the question. No. Uh -huh. What to do, what to do, what to do. Okay, we're gonna have Estelle die. That's that's the only answer. That's the only acceptable answer. Estelle must die. Really? Thank you! Finally. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh no. I don't think this works the way I thought it was going to work. Ah, <sighs> okay. So the only way this is going to work is, um... Is if I, <laughs> uh, reload my original save file and just do that whole thing all over again. So, that's what we're going to do. During battle, there are several bonuses which can be allotted to turn. Turn bonuses have the same effect regardless of whether they are allotted to an ally or a foe. Using S breaks to ignore the battle order makes it easy to jump in and strip an enemy of their turn bonus. That sounds like it requires a lot of coordination, which is not something I am skilled at. We're probably gonna die. Uh, who do we go after first? Why is Joshua the one getting the heart? He doesn't need the heal! He doesn't need the heart! Estelle does! Okay, there are a lot of monsters. Like... Lined up. I think I need to heal Estelle. I don't want her to die. I really don't. Battle order bonus! These icons indicate the bonuses allotted to the battle order. If a bonus icon appears next to a character's icon, they will receive that bonus. Heal, step it up, etc. include indicate the effects of each icon. Good job. Thank you for healing the person who doesn't need it. Um. 
Yeah, sure, why not? Estelle, I really need you to survive this. Stop attacking Estelle! Okay, she's healed now. Revenge time. It's time for revenge. Um... Okay. You are almost dead, so let's just kill you off. Thank you for dodging! Love it when they dodge. And then they don't! Um, is Joshua gonna need healing? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, do I just go with the killing or do I try to heal Joshua? It's fine, it's fine. He can take it. Thank you for hitting his cell. This actually helps, thank you. Joshua. I like how that one just stands in the back there and doesn't actually do anything. It's great. I mean, they, they would both be dead by now. If that thing like joined in with his pal. But I mean it could move up a little bit so that I'm not wasting all my turns trying to get to it. Thank you for the heal. Ooh, and it's his turn again. Alrighty then. inside the treasure chest. The fact that there's not just one, but two is kinda interesting, too. Wonder what's inside. Remember, Estelle, our mission is to search and retrieve only. Sure, but like, if we open them, and then we just close them back up again, and we don't take what's inside, who's to know, really? I'm pretty sure looking inside those boxes doesn't fall under our mission objective. You're no fun at all, Joshua. This has nothing to do with our mission. It's what I like to call good, honest curiosity. You know, we're the only ones down here. We can get away with a teensy we peek, right? Exactly, Estelle. Exactly. If you feel like flunking today's test, then by all means, be my guest. Did you just say the F word? Yep. Opening one of those boxes could result in an automatic fail for the both of us. If this were a real job, the contents of those boxes would belong to the client. I'm not saying we steal what's inside, just take a look and see what it is. And as long as they were nothing illegal, we would have no right to open them. But how would you know that they're, that they're not illegal if you don't actually take the look? I know you're right, Joshua. I just can't help myself. Absolutely have to know what's inside. Why not ask Miss Shira when we get back? But for now, we need to focus on getting out of here. All right, all right. Oh. By looking inside this chest again, you flunk. Just kidding. 